So here's my fourth video on uh, the, the uh, basics of Conf UI. So we've looked at LoRa's, we've looked at prompting, and uh, we looked at image to image. And uh, at this point, you're probably uh, reaching the stage where you've uh, done your image to image, you've put your LoRa's in, you've written a, you've written a hot prompt here that uh, produces um, an image you're really happy with. But the image is a bit small. <laughs> when you zoom in it's i mean it's nice but th there's not much detail when you look in so it looks it looks great at like this at postage stamp size but as, as soon as you get in it all rather falls apart so we arrive at the rather difficult subject that of uh, upscaling and refining and you have a, a few ways of doing this uh, we can upscale with a model which will just sharpen everything, it won't add any new detail. Or we can upscale with one of the fancy um, ultimate upscalers, etc. Uh, but that also won't really, um, they're very limited, you know, you, you have no control over the in, insides of them. Or you can upscale with another pass, uh, which is what I'm going to show you how to do now. It has advantages and disadvantages as well. The advantage is that you'll get a, a, a really uh, nice detailed image. The disadvantage is that it will change from this one. It won't be exactly this image. You have to accept it'll move on from this image. It doesn't have to move on a lot. As you'll see, you have control over that. So to make another image at a different size, we need another sampler. So I'm going to make this for you, but I, I shall I shall put the um, I shall put the workflow in the words end of the video. So we've copied all that. If you copy and then you can paste, you get all of this lot as well. So we'll we'll put a, a group around this. So go add group, and we'll call it up scale refine. So it's a good idea to name your groups. So that's all lovely. Uh, we may or may not need a separate prompt. We probably don't need a separate prompt. We we can leave it there on the chance that we do. Now, our image is getting bigger, so these encodes won't work. So if you put in search, these these nodes will be in the workflow anyway, so you won't have to go and find them. Uh, and we do it tiled. So you'll you'll see in Ultimate Scalar, etc. there's, um, there's um, uh, quite a lot of stuff about tiles, but, um, you go search V A. Oh, that's not very good. <laughs> v A encode. Right. So we're doing it tiled. Now uh, things like Ultimate Upscaler, uh, they they do the whole lot tiled, which I don't like because then you have to deal with seams. This will tile it to go in. The uh, the cuss the the cuss the sampler will have to grind its way through the new resolution. And um, and then it can ha we'll have to decode it tiled as well because it won't have the uh, horsepower to decode it without it being tiled. But uh, the, if you if you have it tiled all the way through the process, uh, it, it just causes a whole lot of problems and you end up with really complicated seam reduction and uh, it all it all goes nasty. Believe me. So what we're going to do now, do now is find the wonderful world of reroutes. So we've got to use our, we want to use the same LoRa's, the same prompts in the next refine. So we want everything to be the same essentially, but just bigger and better. So we do a reroute, which is if you drag it out and let go, you're going to reroute. And we need to take the VAE. This is for the encoding. And reroutes are just a convenient way. Of of getting the um, getting the noodles arranged so that they're not too confusing. You can easily get into a position where you can't work out what the hell it was going where. So our VAEs go to our VAEs. This is the model. The VAE is the model that encodes and decodes your images. This model goes into the scheduler. And that's everything from that row. And everything else needs to come from this side of the LoRa's. 
So the conditioning needs to come after the Laura. See the Laura's run down here into the conditioning and the conditioning comes out. So we do a reroute from the conditioning, a positive, the negative, and also the model is different because the model comes from after the Laura's. Model, 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 model. We want this model because it has the information from the Laura's. Okay, so they're all ready to pipe across. And to do this, you just pull it out, let go, it'll give you a suggestion, pick reroute. Pull it out, left mouse button, release, pick reroute. Okay, so the model goes into model. The positive goes into positive. The negative goes into negative. So there's a couple of things to do here. We don't want the same seed. The same seed will cause problems. So we move the seed on. We want to use less denoise. I'll do 45 because we don't want to change this image too much. And then we have to do our rescale. So if you go to image, pull it out, let go. It'll give you a search. If you put in resize, it'll give you image resize. And we want to rescale. We want it twice as big. So this is uh, 1024 by 768. This is going to be 2048 by 1536. Sorry, 1536 by... So 2048 by 1536. Yeah, that's right. Of course it is. And this image goes in to the VA encode. There it is. We're all plumbed in. I will put this workflow up so you won't need to, but it's a good idea. Just thought it'd be a good idea to show you how it's all plumbed together and where you find the nodes. I'm not using any uh, strange nodes. Some of these nodes you'll have to go and find. Um, if you if they come up red when you load the when you load the uh, JSON file, um, go to Manager and go install missing nodes. So, could it be that simple? Well, we'll press the Go button and see. So here it is back, and we'll put them side by side. And the, the uh, improvement is pretty obvious, I think. Uh, uh, everything here looks much, much, much nicer. And as you notice, it hasn't changed a great deal. Um, we can go in and look at that quite closely. Looks like a lovely holiday destination. And you see how much it has changed. But it, 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 I don't think the uh, I don't think the change really matters. It doesn't matter to me anyway. As you see that the sea has changed more. So I hear you cry. I want more. <laughs> but um, so this image here um, wouldn't upscale with a model very well, because as you see, there's not a lot going on there. However, this one will. So we can then upscale with a model, which is a different process. I'll load it in here. And you'll have to go and find the upscale model. There's all sorts of them from, uh, this is two times, two, up, four times, four times ultra sharp, etc. I'm going to just use the two, the, uh, two times, because that makes a 4,000 pixel image, which truly is big enough for anything, really. It'll go on the biggest monitor. Absolutely fine. And we'll name the group. And the next stage is really very simple. Um, you just pipe this image. I usually take a reroute across. I like my noodles neat. This goes into image. And this only takes a few seconds. And there we go. Your image is now huge and wonderful. So you could send this off to a model to an image save if you wanted to. So if you, uh, if you want to save the image, 
you can take this off, save image, keep prompt, it'll save your image. That'll be in your saved images output folder. As a final note, you can, of course, um, do it in three stages. And uh, this is the workflow I shall put in the description. So, but when you do it in three stages, I do it in one and a half, and then another one and a half, and then finally our model. That's kept with model, and you see the result is pretty good. And it completes in about about a quarter of the time of the ultimate upscaler, which is uh, uh, supposedly the best option, but um, I don't think it's as good, quite honestly. So that's it. I hope that was uh, useful and interesting. Thank you very much for your attention.